My name's John Doherty. I graduated in class of 2007. Studied English, film, music, and theater. I've uh, been out here for eight years. And I'm a, a creative executive at Cross Creek Pictures, which is a film finance and production company. While in college, I did an internship for a friend's father, basically, who was a music editor named Kurt Sobel. Um, and I basically annoyed Tommy, his son, to let me spend the summer in L.A. and shadow his dad. I'd never been to L.A., so that happened, and it was great. And then the summer before my senior year, I got an internship at Partisan Entertainment, which was Michelle Gondry's entertainment company. Uh, it was a commercial music video and film production company. And then I graduated, took a year off to play the drums, and then made my way out here and uh, started interning at Bender Spink, which is a film production company, through a connection out of Philadelphia. Um, and then from there, I got in the mailroom at Endeavor, which became William Morris Endeavor then Happy Madison, Adam Sandler's company, then here for five years. Uh, I saw a posting yeah, yeah. on uh, the UTA job list, which is pretty uncommon to find one that's still available and get a job off there, but it still exists, I believe. And it, um, the position said, uh, you know, film production financing company, uh, first project's Black Swan, which was in the theaters at the time. And uh, I sort of knew it was going to be a small operation and there would be a chance I'd get promoted there. Um, and it was, you know, a, a hot movie at the time. Basically, um, you know, you're assistant for usually two or three stints at different companies. And then, um, obviously, you guys probably have heard about what that entails. That's doing phones and scheduling and basically an apprenticeship for your boss. And then uh, I was kind enough to be promoted by my boss. Um, so I stayed at the same company. Um, and then that my responsibility sort of shifted from organizing his schedule to just even more so being relied on to read the incoming scripts to go out finding new material, running around town, using my connections to get uh, you know young writers and, and, and young filmmakers and start developing relationships because a lot of the times the, the big producer at the company, they're busy producing the movies. They don't have time to sort of survey the, the town and, and, and keep track and, and a pulse on what's going on. And so that was the, the primary responsibilities. And then I sort of moved also into um, finding independent financing for development, which is really what I do mostly. And that's uh, finding a book or a piece of IP, um, optioning it, and then working to with a writer to get a draft out of them and then give them notes and then you know, hopefully get a director attached and then they'll have notes and then you go and shoot the movie and so forth. And so essentially a creative producer is a producer or creative executive is a producer that has yet to produce a movie. Being a creative executive, you sort of, you sort of hit the ground running. You have to figure out how you're going to deal with the other producers, the financiers, the writers, you know, a lot of times the, the people who control the underlying IP which could be if, if it's about a person, so you have to deal with that person whose story you're trying to you know, adapt into a feature film. And then dealing with the director once you have the script, and then you know, casting and so forth. So it's really being a manager of, of the movie as a whole. Yeah, we're, um, I mean our brand is, is pretty uh, filmmaker driven, which means <laughs> basically we attach a big director who um, is passionate about the project and just the financing aspects of it is a lot different than a normal studio. Um, we'll give them a bigger piece of the back end so essentially they own part of the movie and they'll take less money up front. So that translates to the types of movies that these big directors, Ron Howard, Darren Aronofsky, George Clooney, that they end up doing with us are ones that they just want to do. They don't care about getting their quote and their usual you know, millions and millions of dollars they like the story, they're passionate about it for some reason, they want it to be told. And then that has a trickle-down effect more often than not. You know, if Ron Howard's doing this movie and he's taking a pay cut and he wants to be passionate about it, you're going to get Chris Hemsworth on board because guess what? He wants to make a Ron Howard movie. And the same thing with Natalie Portman and Darren Aronofsky and George Clooney and the 20 people he got to be in Ides of March. Um, so that's it's, it's on brand, is or our own brand rather, is sort of... Black Swan was sort of a home run out of the park. It was really financially successful and creatively. 
And then we just replicated that success with Ides of March and Woman in Black. And we just sort of developed a reputation for being not only these kind of highbrow, critically acclaimed stories, which more often than not turn out to be true or based on a book that are well known because they'll, they'll have an audience sort of built in already. Um, we built up a reputation and then that sort of, as long as you maintain it, you, you, people think of you in that regard throughout the industry and you'll get those scripts sent to you and you'll get those actors and, and directors coming to you asking to you, for you to help put their movie together. Well, that's sort of why I'm involved with all the programs is because there was really nobody there that when I was going through that, I, I remember sitting there at a party and everyone was talking about their iBanking bonuses and a girl turned to me and goes, oh, you want to do that film stuff? And then they turned and sort of closed me out of the circle. I was sort of like, all right. Um, so I would say when that happens, you know, don't listen to them. You don't need a job when you graduate. You got plenty of time to figure it out. Go try different things, do internships, come out here for a week, intern for me, intern for anyone. You know, we're, we're pretty, pretty kind here on, in this community. We'll get on the phone with you. Um, and it's sort of trial by fire. You know, I thought I wanted to do something in the entertainment space and then it sort of narrowed down, but not because I sort of started falling in love more and more with specific things. It was sort of work at a talent agency, you're exposed to the entire industry and then you're sort of like, all right, I don't want to rep actors and actresses, I don't want to do this, and you sort of, you close in. And then, you know, uh, when I started working here, I, it, it wasn't even a part of the plan. I really realized, you know, the financing aspects and, and the, the a producer with financing is sort of, he's the guy who hires the director and, and hires the actors and, and deals with the studios and, and owns the movie at the end of the day. You know, when a mo best picture winner goes to the producer and so I was sort of like, that's what I want. Um, and it took, you know, a few years to figure that out. But don't, yeah, don't get stuck in just getting a job to get a job. I had plenty of friends who took a job because they thought that's what they had to do. They dropped two years down the drain and then they all went to law school or what have you because they felt like they had no options and then now they're lawyers and they're not happy and so I would say take the time when you're 22 to 27 it's a, that's when you could take more risks uh, so don't be scared to do so.